Hey, welcome to my video here about how to get started with the Raspberry Pi. I'm going to step you through how to go and create an SD card. So, the first thing you're going to need is you're going to need yourself an SD card. And uh, this one here I got from uh, Micro Center, and it's actually a micro SD card that slides into an adapter for an SD card. You can also get uh, uh, adapters from Adafruit that will allow you to just go and put the, the uh, small card in there. Um, I just don't ha have any of those at the moment, but uh, they look like they'd be a very good option. So you may want to consider that. All right, so we're going to take the flash card and we're going to go and put it in the computer and let's get started. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a folder on the desktop um, for us to uh, put some stuff into. So we're going to name it here uh, Raspberry Pi uh, image. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is we want to go to uh, the raspberrypi.org uh, website and we're going to go and grab ourselves uh, a couple of things. First we're going to grab a utility that's called Win32 Disk Image. Excuse me. And what this is going to do is this is going to allow us to uh, uh, take the uh, image and write it to the SD card. Now on here, the latest version that you'll see here is 0.6, but see it says CBUG. Uh, use it with caution. So we're just going to go and grab the uh, 0.5 binary here. So go ahead and download it to the folder that we created on the desktop. Oh, let's see, I misspelled that. Sorry. All right, so download that file. Let's go back. Uh, we'll close this one. And we'll go back on to uh, raspberrypi.org and we're going to grab the Raspy and Wheezy image here. And uh, we're going to do the direct download. And it takes you to this page here. And uh, okay, yeah, it's going to download within five seconds. Ah, there it is. Uh, so we'll, we'll save it. Uh, this is a rather large file, so it's going to take us some time to download it, as you can see here. It's about five minutes or so. So while it's uh, downloading, let's go ahead and open up uh, the disk, disk imager tool. So we'll go ahead and open it. We, we're using WinRAR here, but you can use WinZip or you, just Windows uh, has a built-in utility to handle zip files. But first we're going to create a new folder here and we'll name it Win32 Disk Imager. And we'll go and take and uh, unzip the file that we'll throw right in, in this folder. So there we go. Close that. And go up here, and we can get rid of the zip file for the utility. So I'll just delete it. Yes. Okay. All right. So we'll go back here and see how much time we got left. We're still at five minutes, so let's pause it right here. We'll come right back. Okay, we're back and we're just about done with the uh, download as you can see here. Oh, and there it goes, it just finished. Alright, so now that that's finished, let's get that out of the way and let's go ahead and unzip the image. And we'll just drag that right over here into our folder. So we'll take a little bit to unzip here. Now you can't just copy this right to the uh, the SD card. You, it's actually a, an image or, or how the files are laid out. So we have to actually use the utility to write it to the, the SD card. So um, we'll go ahead and clean up, get rid of that zip file. We don't need that. All right. So now we'll go into the Disk Imager tool. Let's run it. We run the, the Win32 Disk Imager.exe file. Just double click it. Okay, it's coming up here. Alright, first thing we want to do is we want to make sure we get the right drive for our SD card. Ours happens to be W. And then we need to go and get the image. So we're going to go back up one, and there's the image. And we're going to go and click right to write to the card. And it's asking us, is this really the right card? Yes, it is. So we're going to go ahead and do this. This is going to take you quite a while probably about 10 minutes or so. So we'll pause uh, the video and we'll be back in a minute. All 
Okay, we're almost done uh, with it writing to the SD card. Just give it a couple more seconds here. And there, boom, it's done. So now we'll exit out of the utility. And that's all that's all there is. So we can go ahead and just uh, pop the card out and we could go and stick it right into our Raspberry Pi and we'll be able to boot up the Pi and actually get it configured. Um, in the next uh, couple of blog entries we're going to go over um, how you can do the initial configuration of the, the Pi. We're also going to get it up on the network and uh, one thing is if you can go and get the, the Asus um, USB N10, they're a little tiny uh, Wi-Fi adapter. If you want to go wireless, that is. If you if you've got a hardwired connection, you can use that as well. You don't need to uh, actually um, use a wireless connection. But I, I like to use wireless on these just because uh, um, that that frees up, so I don't have to have the wires. And I only have one extra uh, Ethernet cable here at my desk. But uh, so we're gonna we're gonna go and. Uh, do the initial configuration, get the Wi-Fi set up. Then the next thing that I'm going to actually do is that we're actually going to do is we're going to go and do uh, the VNC so we can actually control it from our PC, and we don't need to have a dedicated monitor to um, be working on the Raspberry Pi. And then the, the, the following that, we're going to go into um, um, setting up uh, Samba for file sharing with a Windows PC. Now, if you're running a Mac or, or Linux, a lot of this stuff won't apply, so I apologize for that. I'm not going to go into those details, but uh, there's plenty of other information out there to help you uh, set these things up. But at least you can look at these and uh, get some ideas of what needs to be done. After we go through that, then we're going to uh, take a look at um, some examples that are in this wonderful book here, the Raspberry Pi User Guide by uh, even Upton, but um, this is a good book for a good resource. Uh, the first thing we'll do is we'll do lighting up an LED, and then we'll do uh, some switch inputs, and then I'm going to jump to something a little bit more advanced, and we're going to use uh, an LCD module. I've got two of these that I'm going to use. One is a parallel, uh, one that I got many years ago from All Electronics, which is also a good source for, for a lot of stuff. Um, and it's been sitting in my parts box for a while, but waiting for use, so I'm going to put it to some use here. And then um, this one in particular here I just picked up is a serial LCD that uh, is made by Parallax. Um, and we're going to use that. And the interesting thing about this device is um, the parallel one that I got from All Electronics is going to require uh, eight input outputs, uh, well, actually, eight outputs from the uh, um, Raspberry Pi, whereas this one is, it can operate serially, so we're only going to be using two or three lines on this one, actually two, um, and that's all we're going to need to be able to display um, some messages on the screen, so stay tuned.